previous lecture, uh, we were looking at the crossbar and how the cross points are operated. So, if you remember then I had actually drawn a state diagram there by which we can build up a control circuitry for a cross point. So, let us look uh, at that and see how we can design a cross point circuitry. Of course, it is a very trivial exercise, but we will still do it. So, the state diagram was something like this. So, there was an off state when the cross point should not be operated or in fact, it will always remain in cross point is off and on state. I am using another state called intermediate state only to ensure that R goes first and then the row actually goes first and then the column is activated so that it goes into on state. If the column goes first and row goes second, then it will not go into on state. So, that is the reason why we actually have also an intermediate state and we also have an on state and you can actually map or compare this figure what, what I had drawn in the earlier one. So, in fact, this is R c the row and column control which is will lead to this state is 0 0, 0 1 and 1 1. It will go into the intermediate state if the row is activated column is not then only it can go into intermediate state and it can only go to on state only via intermediate one. Okay. And of course, if when it is in the intermediate state, if r goes back to 0, so you have 0 0 or 1 0 directly moves to 0 1. In that case, it will come back to the off state. It can only go to on state when after this the column also goes up and of course, after this even if rho actually remains becomes 0, it will remain in the same state the column has to be maintained as 1 and of course, if you have 1 0 basically uh, the rho is activated you will come back to again the intermediate 1 and for all other combinations. So, 0 1 and 1 1 you will retain here and if you have a 0 0 you will come back to this particular state. Okay. So, with this actually now we can build up a logic circuit I am going to do it with a toggle flip flop you can actually use anything else. So, since there are three states I require at least two flip flops. So, that I can each flip flop can possibly represent two states. So, I need to have 4 at least to represent these 3 ones, the fourth state I will not be using. Okay. So, I will be using 2 flip flops, I will draw the diagram picture here itself. I call it T 1, I call it T 0, Q 0 and Q 1, these are the outputs. In fact, there will be inverted output also which will be coming, this can be used by us. And of course, I will take these state outputs and based on that I will decide whether I will be I am going to actually activate the cross point or not. So, cross point is a structure something like this I had drawn it earlier also. This is one So, I will I am actually going to take and short these two and this is my activation I call it signal p. Whenever p is high this cross point is active when p is low it is not going to be active. So, I am going to generate a p from here and the way I can represent it is that this intermediate state is represented as 1 0 on is 0 1. Uh, you can do it other way around then the whole computation actually will change and I can put it as 0 0 which is the off state. There is no 1 1 state of course, in this case. So, that will never be happening in this system. Okay. So, I have to generate this p. So, p should be only activated when you are in on state which actually means your q 1 has to be 0 
and q 0 has to be 1. So, only in that case this is what is going to be the controlling the p. So, this will only be 1 when q 1 is 0 and q 0 is 1, rest all the time it will be 0 and that is what I want here. So, it is if it is in on state this will remain on, otherwise this cross point will not be on if you are not in the on state. So, all other states are immaterial. So, whether it is 0 0 1 0 1 1 does not matter, of course, 1 1 will never be happening. And of course, now I can actually build up I need to as just estimate what will be toggle values depending on what is the current state of this flip flops and what is my input. So, I can actually draw a Carnot map for this, it is actually elementary, but let us do it. So, I am assuming that you know that how the Carnot map operates. So, let us see if it is you are in 0 0 state. Uh, so, q 1 and q 0 both are 0 0 that is 0 state means you are in off. So, if your r c is 0 0 you come back to off state okay. from off you come back to the off state. So, what does it mean? That from off you are coming back to off state. So, you are in 0 0 state, you are in 0 0 state. So, there should not be any toggling. So, all toggle T 1 and T 0 both have to be 0 0. So, I require two of them. So, one is for T 1, other one is for T 0. So, I have to put a 0 here, 0 because there is no toggling required. Okay. When it is 0, 1, then also no toggling is required. So, here I have to pull say, put a 0. When it is 1, 1, no toggling is required. So, I have to put a 0 here. Okay. And when it is 1, 0, then it should go from off to intermediate state. Okay. So, q 1 has to be toggled. So, it is 0, 0. R c is 1 0. So, it has to go from 0 0 to 1 0 state which means this has to be toggled and this should not be toggled. Okay. So, once you are this basically means I have taken care of when you were in 0 0 state. So, what will be the next state that I have decided. There is no 1 1 state. So, that becomes a do not care condition. So, I can use it for optimizing my basically uh, logic circuit here, the commuter logic which I will be using here as an input to, to generate inputs to these flip flops. So, if you are in 0 1 state, in that case, uh, sorry you are in 1 0 state which is intermediate one. So, if you are in 1 0 state you get a 0 0 then what is going to happen. So, I am talking about this particular row. So, 1 0 with a 0 0 you have to go to off state which actually means only the q 1 has to be toggled. So, this will be toggled and this will not be toggled. Okay. And if you are going to have a 0 1 as an input in 1 0 state then also the same result. So, I am going to put a 1 here and a 0 here. Okay. And now, if you put a 1 0 is being inputted then what is going to happen? So, if you are in the same state put 1 0 you go back to the same one. So, no toggling will be required. So, it has to be 0 0.
and if it is 1 1 you go from 1 0 to 0 1. So, both of them have to be toggled. So, I will put a 1 here and a 1 here. Now, if you are in on state what is going to happen? You are in state 0 1. If your R c is going to be 0 0, okay, basically this. So, it goes from 0 1 state to 0 0. So, q 1 is not toggled, but q 0 is toggled. So, q 0 is toggled, q 1 is not toggled. Then if you are in get a 0 1, you remain in same state. So, no toggling. So, both of them will remain 0 0. When you get a 1 0, then you go to 1 0 state. So, both of them have to be toggled. So, this is what is going to happen and when you have 1 1, you remain in the same state. So, no toggling. So, this is what will be your Carnot map and of course, now you can do the optimization. So, in this case you will have this, there will be 3 terms and of course, if you solve for this, you should get P 1 should be equal to R C Q bar plus Q 1 R bar. This actually term corresponds to this value and then you will have Q 1 C. So, there are 1, 2 and 3 terms. So, T 1 will be given by this and similarly from here I can find out what will be T 0. So, this requires only two terms. So, one is combination of this, another one is this combination. So, this should be q 0 c bar plus q 1 r c. So, essentially you will take q 1 q 0, you will take r and c row and column controls, you take these as the inputs and you will take this as a input and you will implement the logics which are here and will generate T 1 and you will also generate T 0. So, these the two logics will be implemented these ones will be implemented in this box and you got your controller for a cross point okay. and that is how your cross bar is going to be implemented.